That man essentially was trapped waist deep. He's still trapped waist deep, but he has a harness attached to him. And we've been seeing in moments where he's trying to pull himself up and out, but it's very difficult because the mud is so thick, as you can imagine. Uh, right now, I want to talk to a paramedic we have on the phone. Her name is Rachel McCarroll. Rachel, are you with us? Yes, I am. Rachel, thank you so much. Are you at the site? Um, no, I'm a nurse. I'm an emergency room nurse, and I work at Florida Hospital Tampa. So you I'm sure have a lot. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm still a certified paramedic, and I used to work for Hillsborough County Fire Rescue. That's okay. where they got that from. So you have a lot of experience in dealing with uh, emergencies. Have yes. you dealt with uh, something like this before? Have I dealt with something like this? Um, many, many years ago, I had a gentleman in a similar situation that was in the ground, and it was a couple hours extrication, just like you were describing. My goodness, with, uh, tell me, if you were to arrive at a scene such as this one, as a paramedic, what happens? What do you do right away when you get there? Um, scene safety, obviously, is the first thing, because if you become a victim, then you cannot take care of the patient. <laughs> so that would be the utmost thing, is scene safety. Um, is the ground safe? Is, and then, of course, you're to your patient, and your first thing with the patient is, is he awake, alert, conscious? What's his airway status like? Is he breathing? circulation, things of that nature. Rachel, and for the folks who are just joining us, I have Rachel McCarroll, a paramedic on the phone, uh, who used to work with Hillsborough County Fire Rescue. Rachel, when you are called out possibly to a scene like this, uh, paramedics who are on standby, what are they doing as the actual rescue effort is underway? Are you getting items in the, your ambulance ready? What's happening as you guys wait typically for a person in this situation to be pulled out of a trench? You're getting everything ready. You're notifying possible hospital of the status of the patient. Um, you, as the provider, are providing the patient with oxygen, a fluid, IV resuscitation, constant um, evaluation of the patient's care, getting your ambulance and all your supplies ready, um, getting other personnel there. Like you were saying, there's a second ambulance there. That might be for the other paramedics. Um, they've been out there for a long time. You've got a second set of hands there. You've got extra firefighters, extra EMPs, because you don't know what's going to happen. Right, and what would be a typical response from paramedics to an emergency situation such as, such as this one? Excuse me. How many paramedics would respond to a scene like this? Um, it depends on what's going on with the patient once you find out, but it's, I'm, I'm, I can't talk about their current policy because I don't know their current policy, but it would probably be a rescue unit, a rescue ambulance, a fire truck, a um, chief on scene, and then maybe incident command, depending on how many patients there are, how many, you know, scene control, things of that nature. Tell me, Rachel, what kind of concerns, medical concerns, would there be in a situation like this when we know that a man is trapped waist deep in mud? And Hillsborough County Fire Rescue says they don't believe there are any other injuries. But as a paramedic, what comes to mind that could be potential medical concerns once he is freed from the mud? Um, um, hypothermia, because if he's in the mud, it's in the ground, it's cool. Um, I know it's 80 degrees outside, but, you know, People still suffering hypo hypothermia. Um, his blood not circulating appropriately because yeah. he was in a con in compression area. And when you take him out of a compression area, that blood is going to start circulating to that area. So is he going to be compensating? Is his body going to be compensating appropriately? Um, resuscitation efforts, like I said, um, oxygen supplies, you know, is he, does he have any kind of injuries? Is his ankle or another, you know, another limb broken or, or sprained or anything, but he can't feel it because of the mud, <laughs> you know, yeah. things of that nature. Once he gets out, a full evaluation of him and constant, constant assessment. And how about, you know, what kind of work would paramedics in this, a paramedic in this situation will be doing, not only for the person who is trapped, but, you know, you have a lot of construction workers still on site. You have uh, crew members from Hillsborough County Fire Rescue, 35 to 45 people there working in the heat, working in difficult circumstances. Would paramedics will also be able to assist these people in this circumstance? Well, I think, like, like you said, I think that the, sec the second um, ambulance has already shown up. That's probably for backup. Um, if the first medics were unable or their, like I said, again, I can't talk to their policy, but they would probably be doing some time of uh, rest care, you know, 
so much, so much time. The firefighters have so much time when they go into a fire. They have to come out. They have to rest. They have to cool themselves off. They have to hydrate. So the paramedics are the same. Um, they're on this heat. So I would assume that that second ambulance is to take over in case that first ambulance couldn't or depending on what time, time frame they get the gentleman out. And they what about um, Rachel? Yeah, definitely great information there. What about... What's the first thing that paramedics in a situation like this would do once the man trapped is freed? What's the first thing once you have the patient with you that we airway. don't do? Airway. Really? Airway, airway, airway. C-spine and airway. I know that he's, you know, he's in a hole, but once you get him on you know, a stretcher, I'm sure that they've already got a backboard and a seat collar and ready to you know, immobilize him and airway, oxygen, evaluation, IV fluids, you know, um, hydration purposes, checking his entire body out, seeing if, you know, any injuries, and then taking him to the closest appropriate facility. Yeah. All right. Rachel McCarroll, a nurse, uh, sharing some of her experience and insight as to what would paramedics be doing in this situation. We appreciate your time uh, and the information you've shared with us. Thank you so much.